to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing where you can gather by my deep croaky voice with a southern accent. I've got a bad cold, I've got a seriously bad cold, it's called man flu. So what's the next best thing to go in pike fishing when you're homebound and you can't get out? Of course, it's making pike traces. Now one of our pike films that we made here at Totally Awesome is going completely off the scale. It's like, well, at the time of filming this, it's going towards 100,000 views Hadn't even been out a year, quite where it is. Must be my good looks, I think. But anyway, let's move on. We're constantly asked, how do you make those pipe traces? Because they're ones I make up myself. This is how we do it. We'll show you everything we can and use them and get out there pipe fishing. Let's take a look at the kit first. Okay, guys, now most of you pipe fishing out there, if you're starting, probably the fishing tackle shops, they're gonna sell you ready-made traces and they're gonna be made with treble hooks. I'm not a lover of treble hooks. Of course, I've used them as all pike anglers do, I'm moving away from them now. Now let me just show you these ones, which are just a little bit different. I don't know if you can still get these. We're not pushing tackle. We do not push tackle like this, as you guys know. These are the ones I've used, I've had them a long time. They're partridge, they're called Grey Shadow. Hugh Falkos, who is a famous sea trout fisherman, hold fast. Now, here's the trick, out barb treble hooks. Now these are a size six. Now, instead of having any barb on the inside, they have a small barb. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see that. Just here, on the outside, there's a barb, there's a barb. So now this is just a different way that obviously Hugh Falk has designed for pike trebles. And I've heard, I can't vouch for it, but they're supposed to be easier to take out. Now, should you get a deep hook pike, and it will happen with treble hooks sooner or later, we get what we call staple stomach. Now for that, you want to get the treble out. You do not want to just cut the wire. We use these big long disgorges for treble hooks. Now what you do is you slide it down the wire inside the pike's jaws like this, all the way down, and you'll see in that slot, that's where the wire goes, it goes right the way down. Obviously I've got it stuck in my finger, so I do it slowly. You can see the treble hook, watch this, it's quite clever. There, now that, is in line, as you push it down, it opens up the skin, if it's hooked in the stomach, and you can actually push it down and you can pop it right out. So that's quite a handy tool to have. However, you might want to, I've found this myself, sometimes I get, this is a new one I'm using, I've sawn it down a little bit lower because I want the treble hooks actually touching that piece of plastic just there. If they're back here, sticking up, as I had it just now, like this, they're still gonna snag when you try to take them out. You want them really completely masked on here. So there's a little tip if you do get a deep hook pike, use one of these. Better, I think, is don't use trebles at all. If you must use a treble, you could try these partridge ones. Again, these are old ones, semi-barbless. Now they are a semi-barbless hook. They don't have a great big full, ripping great big tear ears off type of barb on them. They've got nothing on one, nothing on the other, and if I just turn that one around, I don't know if you can see it, just there, it's a very, very small barb. Now, providing when you're pike fishing, you keep tight to the fish, you're, you're rarely gonna lose it. You're rarely gonna lose it. That's almost more of a bait holder. For me, put these back in the tackle box, you know, I don't use them anymore. I use almost exclusively, well I do now when I'm bait fishing, uh, these VB hooks, which are a doubled one in by partridge and that's what they look like that is a big mama that one's probably about size two i should think there they are that's a downturn eye on it and as you can see there I hold it dead still it's turned down the eye it really doesn't matter it's up or down to be honest but you've got a standard barb here a standard barb there the small one is the bait holder so that nicks into the bait but what i do now to make it easier for getting out is I crush this with a pair of forceps like this, just crush that barb and make it a barbless because after you've caught a lot of pike, you realize if you keep tight to fish, you can get away with barbless, but obviously you want a barb there. Now you can see that's so easy. If that goes in a fish like that, you can get your forceps right in the bend, lock them off and just roll it out, slide them out. You can't do that with a treble. Let's move on, let's talk about the wire trace we're gonna use. Now, all you youngsters out there, and I've been pike fishing for an excess of 40 years, do not use nylon G3. 
just regular nylon tie a treble hook or a bait or a lure onto the nylon the pike's teeth will go through it no question sooner or later now people do get lucky and they land fish on flies with leaders and the hooks just nicked in the scissors you might get lucky i just don't like leaving hooks in those fish so use wire now i have also used 40 and 50 pound nylon obviously i've tried everything in the pike fishing world known to man or god yeah i didn't lose any fish on it but i just it's not it's too thick it's too thick the model you want fine wire now that's just a regular shop bought one that i think you know it's probably just a standard it's 20 pound wire I don't really use it. I don't like 20 pound wire anymore. I use this Tide Cheetah, which I use for years and years and years. It's green, it's for sea fishing. It's to cut through the tide on places, say like the Isle of Wight, where we do a lot of cod fishing, you have to use a lot of lead. So to get away with a lead, you can use two pound lead on nylon. You can use a one pound lead if you use wire line. But this wire is stainless steel. I quite like the color, it's green, it's cable laid. I've also used single strand. Do not use single strand. It will eventually get a kink in it and it will break. Always use cable. So all you're gonna need really, about 18 inches of this wire, just peel off 18 inches of it and cut it with a pair of scissors, but use the throat of the scissors there. Right in, pop, gone. On one end, I'm gonna put, so complicated it's totally awesome, a number 10 barrel swivel in black, which breaks at 50 pound test. There's not a coarse fishing rod in the world that's going to break a 50 pound test swivel. At the other end, I'll show you the rig, the secret, totally awesome rig that catches all that pike. Okay, there's my tiny little number 10 barrel swivel there. What I'm gonna do is take one end through the eye of the barrel, leave myself about inch and a half an overhand knot. This stuff is fine. I've been using it for years and years and years. Pull that knot down. I'll try and do it with the force up so you can see it pull down. And I use these locking forceps. A for unhooking the pike. And B, watch. Pull that down really tight. You can do a second knot if you want. But personally, I don't think you need to do it. Because using these forceps, they lock just here. Obviously using operations to block off arteries when they're doing brain surgery and all that other yucky stuff. Now you've got your tag end, that's the uh, standard length of wire. You've got your tag end, all we do is lock it off there and then I line it all up, just put a little bend in that so it's straight and it's hanging 90 degrees to that. And then I'm gonna spin it around and around and around and whip it on. And trust me, it won't move. Okay, then all you need to do after whipping it up, you can see how neatly that is. Absolutely what we call touching turns. If you get it right, it takes a bit of practice, but I've been doing it for a long time. Get your scissors, close as you can. Look how neat that is. Lovely, and that's all you need. Then we slide right down to the other end, and on go our two hooks. Okay, having got away from trebles, I just use the VB hook at the back of the bait, and my casting or holding hook is just a standard carp hook, which is record breaker specialist hooks by Puckridge. And size twos, but the difference being that's a downturned eye, that's a straight eye. I just like straight eyes for what the bait retaining hook, you know, the one that actually takes the casting weight. That's the one that goes on first. Let's put that down. All we do, take the other end of the wire, just go through the eye once. Now, a sprat, which is my predominant bait, will be about, let's say, yay big, just about that long. So I'm going to do my first overhand knot there to hold this bait holding or bait casting hook, leaving myself about a good four inches behind. That's why it's always best to get at least 18 inches of wire. I put it down, get my forceps here, give it a little tweak. That's tight, that's all it needs, it's not going anywhere. Then I do a, a wrap around the shank. Now look how that goes, that makes that exactly straight. And I'm leaving the barb on there because I'm gonna put it through the bait and I don't want the bait flying off. Then I get my VB hook through the eye and I try and judge it. There's an inch, two inches, I'd say two inches. And then I make my knot just to hold it there. 
Don't want to leave it too long because I don't want that holding hook too near the back of the sprat. And you can use obviously dead roach and dead dace. I've used all that before. They're very, very good. They are better than sprats. I just don't like killing all the nice little fish anymore. They're under enough pressure as it is. Cormorants, otters, signal crayfish. Now I'm going to do two on this one. I'm going to do two knots on this one. And you might write in and say, why? And I'm going to tell you what. I don't know why. I just do two knots. Let's just get that on the end there. Tweak it up. And do the four sets. Give it a little pull to straighten it out. And I like to start my touching turns by just bending that tag end away a little bit. And then I'll go to forceps. They're so easy to make these. Double click them. And then line yourself up. Keep this nice pulled nice and tight. Don't stick the hook in yourself. And then we're ready to spin it up in those touching turns. Okay, all spun up nice and neat. There's my tag end. Ordinary scissors, get right down in the throat of the scissors. You won't be able to cut the wire unless you get right in there like that. But that's how easy it is. Keep the tag ends, put them somewhere else. So, as you can see, there is the rig completed. Barbless, one barb, one barb. This is goes through the jaw, through into the head of the bait for casting. And this barb is, is just be really a retaining barb and it leaves, it leaves the other one standing straight up. Now, if you're in a lake and you're very shallow, you can use no weight at all, just use the weight of the sprat. But I use almost religiously a standard SSG shot because that gives me that little bit of extra casting weight. And all I do is just pinch it right in front of the eye of that leading hook like that. Just crush it down. Obviously when I'm fishing, I use my teeth and then wonder why I have to go and visit the dentist. Easier to use forceps. So there's the rig all done. Now I'm going to show you the important part about hooking that sprat on. Oh, now look. He's near beauty. This is the star of the show. Oh, he's lovely. Do you know what that is? It's a sprat. Wrong. It's a pike as far as I'm concerned. And this is how I put them on. Right, here's the most important part. That hook goes through what we call, in big game fishing terms, the throat latch. But, in order for the sprat to work, you have to bring that hook out right between the eyes on the top of the head. Perfect. Now you can see that. Absolutely between the eyes. That way it hangs straight. You also, this one's breaking up because I've been thawing out the freezer. Don't put a bend in the bait, just nick that bait holder hook in there. Just like that, so it's hanging. I mean, that, that basically has got pike written all over it. And it's as simple as that. And of course, when you do hook a pike, it's dead easy just to unhook these. Look, you just get in the big bend, they're easy to get out, not like those tiny trebles that you can never get out. You can just get them, turn them over, get the front one, tear it at the fish, job done. So there you have it, how to make totally awesome pike traces. So simple. Well, I want to go pike fishing now, though. That's the trouble. I still couldn't get rid of this cough. Good luck with it, guys. And let us know if you do catch any pike of any size.